we end up, uh, we found the owl. He first landed on the outrigger, and after landing on the outrigger, the crew initially uh, noticed him. We all thought he was a seagull at first, and after checking him out again, it turned out he was not a seagull at all. He ended up flying off. We didn't think we were going to see him again, and next thing you know, he decided to land on the bow of our boat. The captain then seeing him during a mid-tow, he went out with his laundry bag in hand, waited for the wind to die down, creeped up behind him, and bam, he decided to steal himself a white owl. And, well, the crew, we couldn't believe it when he came down and told us, but he drilled some holes in the cover, put him in there, and, well, we fed him for days. <laughs> But we ended up, we looked around, uh, the captain made a bunch of phone calls so he found the right individuals and uh, the right individuals were found. My name is Dr. Helene Van Donick. I'm a veterinarian and the co-founder of the Cobblecoat Wildlife Rehabilitation Centre, which is located in Hilden, Nova Scotia. Hi, my name is Myrtle Messer. I'm a co-founder and work at the Cobquid Wildlife Rehabilitation Centre with Dr. Helene Van Donick. I'm usually the one who's handling the animals that come into our centre while Dr. Van Donick looks at them. When we first brought Titan to the clinic, we do a full exam on him. Um, some of it's done awake. And the last part of that involves putting him under anesthetics so that we can safely take x-rays and safely handle him to properly assess his injuries. It's not easy to do that when they're awake. Uh, if they're stressed, which they are, uh, it keeps everything calm. And uh, then we can do our full exam on him. After we uh, had anesthetized and, and x-rayed Titan, we started to focus in on the injuries that he had to his wrists. Uh, wild birds in captivity tend to kind of flail around and fly up against things when they're stressed. And when they do that, they tend to injure their wrist joints because they're the first thing that will hit a solid surface. So his, wound, his wrists were quite exposed, so we cleaned them up as well as we could. We applied some wound healing, um, sort of a gel product, and then we put a layer of a product called Tegaderm over the surface, which basically helps to keep the wound clean and protect it, but it still allows it to breathe. So it's just basically starting the wound healing process. Once we're happy with the medical exam, the physical exam, and that you know they've come through with x-rays with positive results, and then we transport them back to the Cabo Good Wildlife Rehab Center um, to begin their rehabilitation process. After some time in intensive care, uh, Titan was ready for his next step uh, in his rehabilitation process and that was to move him to an outside enclosure where he would be able to get some exercise and become acclimatized to the outside environment. This was a busy time for us at the CWRC and, uh, and Titan was not the only snowy owl we had. Uh, we already had one from the North Sydney area and when we initially introduced uh, the two owls together, they got along quite well. After about four months of rehabilitation, uh, Titan was flying very well inside the enclosure and he was starting to get a little bit uh, uh, unfriendly, which is a good sign for us because that means that they're ready to go. And if they don't like us, we, we really like that. That means that they're ready to go and it's time for them to be released. Uh, there was one uh, moment where I was filming inside the, in the enclosure with a little camera and uh, Titan flew right at the camera and knocked it off the perch. So I took that as an indication that, yeah, I think it's about time he should go. Titan was a really good experience for us. Um, we had several snowy owls uh, this year, but he was, you know, a particularly good story in that, you know, it took a lot of people coming together to get help for that bird. He was, you know, obviously in no man's land out in the middle of the ocean. Um, you know, without seeing the boat that he landed on, he probably would have perished out there. And without the people on the boat caring enough to capture him, knowing and being astute enough to realize that he was not in good shape, um, they caught him, they took care of him, they even called Department Natural Resources to ask how to take care of him, which was cool. And you know, they provided excellent care for him and probably saved his life because he, you know, he would have either drowned or starved to death. Um, and then we got him, and uh, though he did have some wounds, uh, he was, you know, a fairly straightforward uh, rehabilitation. And uh, you know, he was challenging to heal, but he did heal. 
um, he made it through the rehabilitation process and despite all odds was able to you know fly and 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 be aggressive enough being housed with other owls to put on a good amount of weight and he released well he was out of there like as fast as he could um, so it was a really good experience for us um, snowies are not something we deal with regularly so it was it was nice to see um, that one do really well.